This homeless man with no education created Louis Vuitton, a brand synonymous with luxury, success and status. Creating that kind of brand with no money while sleeping in the forest is impossible. The story of Louis Vuitton is unbelievable and full of struggle, falls, controversy, lawsuits and betrayal. Today we will uncover the full story of the company and its dark secrets. We need to go back to 1821 in a small French village named Ankai. A kid named Louis Vuitton was born. From birth, Louis was doomed. They had no water, no electricity. Young Louis worked from dusk till dawn on the farm with his dad. His mom would make hats in spare time to make some extra cash. It was hard for farmers because France was still recovering from the Napoleonic Wars. Louis never learned to read and write. The nearest school was more than six miles away from him. At least he got food on the table. But a tragedy struck the Vuitton family. Louis' mother died when he was only 10 years old. Shortly after, his father remarried. His new stepmom was something like the evil stepmom from Disney movies. As in Disney movies, Louis took his bag and left home. His plan was to go to Paris. The problem was Paris was over 225 miles away. And the other problem was he had no money or food. While traveling, he would sleep in the forest and work various jobs for money or food. That's pretty tough for a 13-year-old kid. Because of the various jobs he took, Louis learned to work with metal, stone, fabric and wood, which would be crucial later. After two years living like this, he finally reached Paris. There he found a job as an apprentice box maker and packer. Because of this job, he met a lot of people from the upper class. His best client was then the Empress of France. He became her personal box maker. This is a huge achievement and gave him confidence that he could go solo. He opened a shop in Paris. The designs at his time had major flaws. The boxes were made of leather and had rounded tops, so it was hard to stack them and were not water resistant. That was important because people would keep their art, instruments and many more valuable things that could get destroyed. So Louis needed something stackable and water resistant. Louis experimented with different materials and found out canvas was lighter, durable and more water resistant and made the tops flat so that it can stack. Because of Louis, luggage looks as they look today. Within two years, his product became a must-have for wealthy people and a status symbol. He would get orders from around the world. In 1859, he had 20 employees and a workshop outside Paris. Then something happened. Traveling became affordable and wasn't a luxury that only the wealthy could afford. You know what that means? More customers and more money, baby. Louis was in the clouds. He basically had a money printing machine. 1870 came and the Franco-Prussian War started. It was so terrible that Louis lived in a shelter with tons of people, constantly thinking it was his last day and nearly died from starvation. 1871, the war was over. When he returned to his shop, everything was destroyed and stolen. He lost everything he worked his whole life. Now here, most people would give up, but he said it would be better than before. He saw an opportunity. Paris was destroyed, huge amounts of shops were available for rent. He used that and opened a shop in a much more wealthy location in Paris. It wasn't just a wealthy location, it was near the railway station and the Grand Hotel, which was perfect for him. He continued working on his business until his death at 70 years old. His son Georges took over. He opened a store in London. Georges had troubles. There were a lot of counterfeits, so he created the now iconic LV logo to make counterfeits job harder. He also added a revolutionary new lock on the luggage. In 19,000, LV had over 100 employees and was growing year after year. Georges Vuitton died in 1936 and Gaston Louis took over few years before World War II would start. France went under siege by the Austrian painter. Gaston Louis didn't want to end up like his grandfather. Only way to save the business was to collaborate with the Nazis. Today the company is ashamed of that, but that was the only way. Coco Chanel was one of the brands that did the same things as LV. And probably if they didn't do that, we wouldn't have these two brands. Gaston passed in 1970 and his sons didn't know how to run the company. So Henry Rakamir took over. Henry found and sold a company named Stinox Steel for huge amounts of profit. Henry made few changes to LV. 
First, it became a massive corporation and changed the business model from wholesale to retail and expanded the brand to many countries, including Japan. Because of that, the sales went from 20 million to over 200 million, and Henry made the company public. With that move, he could open more stores. That's why in 1987, LV hit the billion dollar mark in sales. Henry got another idea. That was combining the company with Moet Hennessy, a luxury drinks company that produces champagne and cognac. The company became LVMH. Now this is good. They could expand faster and make much more money. But not everything was sunshine and rainbows. After the merger, Henry didn't get along with Moet Hennessy president, Alan Chavere. Henry publicly complained to the media about Moet Hennessy, saying things like champagne can be found on the shelves of every corner supermarket, but our leather goods require exclusive distribution. Alan wanted to bring former head of Chanel as Henry's future successor. Henry needed help, so he decided to ask his friend Bernard to help him manage the situation. Yep, that guy. Bernard secretly bought 43% of shares of LV and betrayed the man he was meant to help. They went to court, but the court went with Bernard. Henry was crushed and disappointed and decided to leave LV. Now this situation was hugely covered by media and the public decided to go with Henry. The sales of LV went down, but Bernard found a way. LV started to collaborate with few famous fashion designers during its 100 year anniversary collection. People loved it and it bought LV back, as you know, now Bernard is the CEO and has a net worth of $174 billion. Under his command, LV expanded to jewelry, sunglasses and watches. LV today is a status symbol and they are the number one fashion brand in the world, valued at $26.3 billion, growing each year with no sign of stopping. I hope you enjoyed this video. The story of the merger is so interesting that it could be a video of its own. This is just a short summary of what happened. If you want to see that video, just tell me in the comments. If you're French or speak French, tell me if I pronounce the names right. Also, if you like business content and business stories, please consider subscribing.